Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Rotten Horror Picture Show, the horror movie podcast where we talk about films off the Rotten Tomatoes 200 Best Horror Movies of All Time list. My name is Clay. With me as always is Amanda. How are you doing, Amanda? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. And before we get started, <laughs> I want to mention that right now on our Patreon at patreon.com slash the file, our poll mm. to determine what Amanda and I will cover next year on mm-hmm. Patreon is live. You have three choices. Yes. You have holiday horrors, stuff like My Bloody Valentine, April Fool's Day. I was thinking for mm. Halloween, uh, we could either do a different Halloween themed movie yeah. or just do a random Halloween franchise movie that we haven't watched. So like yeah. we could end up watching Halloween 6 yeah. or something. Yeah. Or if the people demand it, <clears throat> Halloween 3. Yes. <laughs> Uh, the other choices are, um, shit, uh, remakes and reboots. Yes. And a curated list of video nasties. And as of right now, video nasties is in the lead. Mm. All right. By a pretty good margin. So mm. that's probably right. what we're going to do. But if you would like us to do something else, yes, sign up for Patreon and make your voice heard. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of excited. I'm I'm looking for, if Video Nasties wins, I'm not going to be disappointed. <laughs> right. Because there are a lot of movies, the movies that we would do mm-hmm. are not on our main list. And I think are a lot, most of them, some of them are worth talking about. Yeah. Um, there's a couple Argento movies on there that mm. are not on our main list that I think oh, would be fun to do. Um, I need to double check that just to make sure because if we... <laughs> they are on our list we can't do them which means we're going to end up watching some bad movies (laughs) uh but but i think i think it's going to be good i as we were talking about before the show started i've been like neck deep in giallo movies lately yep for some reason ever (laughs) since watching the bird with the crystal plumage um so always looking for an excuse to talk about that which i'll probably get next week or next time because next time I'm going to spoil it right now. We're doing Suspiria. <laughs> Clay is so excited he can't not talk can't about it right now. not talk about it right now. Amanda and I are going to see <laughs> Goblin live. Yes. And they are going to do a live score to a viewing or a screening of Suspiria, which God, I'm very excited so about. Good. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's going to be the next episode. But this episode, yes. before we get too ahead of ourselves. This is a good one, too. We are doing number 105 on our list. 1958's The Horror of Dracula, or as it's known in the UK, Dracula. <laughs> uh, it was it was called The Horror of Dracula because in America, because copyright, copyright yeah, because of Universal. Universal actually um, gave them the okay to do this movie hmm. if uh, if Hammer, who's the the company that. Pre, uh, made this movie. Yeah, gave Universal the United United States uh, uh, distribution rights. Oh. which I don't got really it. Know so it's they... a weird like Sony Disney <clears throat> Spider Man thing. Yeah, and apparently, according to one of the according to Christopher Lee, mm. who heard this from a guy who worked at Universal, like a, a fairly high up guy, mm. he told Christopher Lee that this movie single handedly saved Universal from bankruptcy. So. I, wa- I wonder how true that is. Like, I'm not saying it's not true, but that's a really interesting claim. Yeah. 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 I think Peter Cushing might have corroborated it. I don't know. I can't yeah. remember. Anyway. No, I, I, I don't. I don't disbelieve it, like, on principle. It's more just, like, knowing it's kind of a second to third hand yeah. comment. Yeah. Well, that's it's interesting, though. It is it is interesting because, yeah. you know, I think we'll get into some of the stuff as far as where Universal was with their monster movies mm. and stuff like that and where monster movies and horror movies were in general when this movie came out. But it is number 105 on our list. It has a 90% Rotten Tomatoes score. Had you seen this before? I had not. And I've seen a, I've seen a Christopher Lee Dracula movie before mm-hmm. and now I have no idea which one. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens with these movies. Yeah, that's usually what like, happens. Yeah, there's some like ladies in gauzy dresses around at that's some point. all of them. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Which did not like this movie started and I was like, I don't think I've seen this. And then a woman in a gauzy dress showed up and I was like, maybe I have seen this. And then it kept going and I was like, no, I haven't seen this. That is like watching a Jala movie. <laughs> And saying, <laughs> uh, "Is this the one with the with the killer with the black gloves?" And you go, "Yeah." yeah. It's like I've seen oh, where wait, the main no. character is an expat living in Italy. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Um, so, uh, 
everyone who listens to the show is aware mm. of my the horrible mistake that I made earlier this year where I <laughs> deleted our almost two hour conversation about Bram Stoker's Dracula. We have just been holding it over his head. Yeah. Every day ever since. But uh, since this is also a Dracula movie, um, I wanted to, to swing back and talk about this again, again for us anyway. Mm. What is your history with Dracula? Are you a fan? Do you mm. hate the book? Do you hate the character? Do you hate the movies? Uh, Dracula is basically his own genre. At this yes. Point. Yeah. There's enough Dracula that you can literally write books about how much Dracula there is mm-hmm. and in a variety of different subgenres. I, I'm a big Dracula fan. I'm a, um, I am sure I've told this anecdote at some point. I don't know if it's made it to air. (laughs) Too spicy for air. Yep. Cut it out every time. I meant more because our last Dracula conversation got, uh, eaten by the internet. Um, but Dracula is one of the books that I think I was like 12. And, uh, I said to my mom, I want to buy Dracula. Like I want to, I want to read this book. And she went, okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I got in trouble for reading it in seventh grade nice. homeroom and I got a note sent home. I'm pretty sure. Of all the books. Yeah. And I kind of kept trying to be like, yeah, but my mom bought this for me. Mm-hmm. And the teacher was like, no, she didn't. <laughs> I was too young for Dracula. You see, I didn't understand. Seventh grade? What I was reading. I don't know, man. It's what? not like you were reading like interview with the vampire oh i absolutely was reading that (laughs) well she didn't catch you reading that is what i mean right right yeah i wasn't reading that oh i might have been reading that in school now that i think about it so anyway i i'm a big i'm a big dracula fan Mm -hmm. i remember watching the the bella lugosi dracula god i don't even know how old i was i was really young i think my aunt even brought it over clearly my whole family was just like yeah horror movies are good for kids <laughs> um but yeah i i i am a i was very much like i read dracula i was an Anne rice fan mm-hmm. so the whole vampire I, I missed the twilight thing thank god sure but the whole like vampire subgenre of horror was it was a big phase for me mm-hmm. so i really i like The Dracula story, I think it's really fertile ground for like kind of having different themes and different issues. And you you can kind of do it in a bunch of different ways. I always found it more interesting with more like moral ambiguity Mm -hmm. and and sort of gray areas than say like your your wolf man, you know, which is not to say anything bad about the wolf man. Yeah, but please don't. No, but he just, you know, he turns into a wolf and he can't help it. Yeah, that's it this whole issue dracula is much more nuanced that's true you can have a different type of dracula you know he was cursed give him a break i know but again it was it was all out of his hands um yeah i i uh dracula is probably my favorite character Mm -hmm. like full stop wow um i i have always been a dracula fan i don't really know where it started Mm -hmm. i think probably the the if i had to guess Probably cartoon, some cartoon version, which oh, then yeah. morphed into the Universal Monsters version, which mor- morphed into this, which morphed into other stuff. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's fu- it's funny. Dracula the novel, I think I read it fairly late mm. because I, as someone who um, was a voracious consumer of more visual things yeah. like comic books and movies... Um, when I finally got around to Dracula, mm. it took me a while to get into it because I was like, what's going on? What's all this extra shit? Yeah. Let's just get into the plot. Like to this day, <laughs> I have still never finished Frankenstein. Really? Because I like when I first started reading those two books. Yeah. Frankenstein especially. Like Dracula, Dracula is generally... People hit the beats. Yes. Right? Like yeah. the story's basically there in any version. Right. And it, and it picks up speed. Right. Like, like, like it, it kind of like once once Lucy goes, then the whole thing just kind of really yeah. amps up. And it, it's like it's recognizable from the get go, the book. Like, yes. so it's, you know, if you've only seen the movies, you start reading the book, the first thing that happens is it's Harker going to yes. the castle, right? Yep. So it's like you're, it, it's recognizable stuff. Yep. Frankenstein. 
is like 50 <laughs> pages of shit yeah, that if you've it's only like seen the I movies. Went to, I was going to college and I was in love with this girl. It's not even that. The beginning of Frankenstein is, is if I remember correctly, is mm. just like the captain's log of the captain who's driving that boat through the Arctic that finds Frankenstein. Oh. Like it's mostly that. It's, oh, like, wow. it's like notes home to that guy's wife. It's been a long time since I read I'm pretty sure that's how Frankenstein yeah. starts. So when I read started reading Frankenstein, I was like, I don't. Yeah. I'm sure it's in here somewhere. <laughs> uh, to this day, I don't think I've ever finished it. Uh, it's one of my bucket list things to do. Got to do it. Um, but these movies, the the Hammer Dracula movies in particular, I came into probably like in high school mm-hmm. because a friend of mine actually had a bunch of these movies on VHS and he lent them to me. And nice. I think it was a combination of those VHSs and probably catching them on late night TV. Yeah. That kind of hooked me initially. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of came back around to Hammer probably in college. Yeah. And really, really started getting into them. I love Hammer. I love Hammer. Yeah. Um, and which I will talk about probably at length here. But <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy we're doing a Hammer. I would do all Hammer Is movies. Is this our if I had first Hammer movie? I believe it is. Holy shit. Yeah. And All it's a good right. one to start with because it is next to uh, Curse of Frankenstein. Mm-hmm. Those two movies are the, the movies that kicked off the Hammer mm. horror thing. So we can talk about that later too. Yeah. Uh, but we are going to take a quick break and then we're going to talk about the horror of Dracula. Dun, dun, dun. This is the story of Dracula. A creature who destroys all whom he touches. Dracula the terrifying, the feared, who sleeps in the tombs of the dead by day and arises at night to inflict his terror upon the innocent and the unsuspecting. You must help me. You must. You're my only hope. You must. I'll help you. I promise. try and understand. This is not Lucy, the sister you loved. It's only a shell, possessed and corrupted by the evil of Dracula. How do you destroy a fiend who has so far proven himself indestructible? Those who come to end his reign of terror stay to become his victims. Castle Dracula is summoned here in Klausenberg. Will you tell me how I get there? You ordered a meal, sir. As an innkeeper, it's my duty to serve you. When you've eaten, I ask you to go and leave us in peace. This is the doctor who dares to challenge the vampire Dracula. This is the anguished man who fears for the lives of his beloved, the girl who is his sister, and the one that is his wife. Dracula, the bedeviled master of all that is evil. Okay, The Horror of Dracula from 1958, directed by Terence Fisher, written by Jimmy Sangster, based on the novel by Bram Stoker, starring Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee. I was going to do the thing where I just list, mm. like, use other characters that they've been in, yeah. but I feel like these two actors are, are too <laughs> iconic to do that. I was just going to say, like, with starring uh, Grand Moff Tarkin, yeah. <laughs> and I didn't want to say the words Count Dooku. Yeah. <laughs> the, in That's the, fair. Well, because I feel like with these two actors, if we had encountered them in, an, in a, any movie before this one, we would have said, starring Dracula, Van Helsing. Probably, and- yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, starring Peter Cushing, Christopher Lee, Melissa Stur- uh, Stribling, Carol Marsh, and he's not as identifiable, so I'm going to do it here, Alfred Pennyworth from the 90s Batman movies. The best Alfred, Michael in my Goth. opinion. Yes. And yes. he actually uh, uh, co-starred with Christopher Lee in Sleepy Hollow. Oh, oh my god. 
That was him. How do I just like, like, he's so distinctive. How does my brain just gloss over him? Well, we're going to find out in a second, I think. We are going to find out in a second. Amanda, what happens in Dracula 1958, the horror of Dracula? On a search for his missing friend, Jonathan Harker, vampire hunter Dr. Van Helsing is led to Count Dracula's castle. Upon arriving, Van Helsing finds an undead Harker in Dracula's crypt and discovers that the Count's next target is Harker's ailing fiancée, Lucy Holmwood. With the help of her brother Arthur, Van Helsing struggles to protect Lucy and put an end to Count Dracula's parasitic reign of terror. Mm-hmm. That's a more or less correct. More or less, yeah. yeah. Well, Clay, some things you'll find in the horror of Dracula include... Mm. <laughs> Dracula's feet. Dracula's feet, and I hate it. <laughs> this weird pet peeve that I have is I never want to see Dracula's feet. I we, we I want to talk about that. Okay. Like I want to actually like get to the bottom. I want to psychoanalyze you and your foot aversion. Do you want to wait or you want to do it right let's, now? Let's let's wait. Let's okay. get through the rest of the list. Okay. Because <laughs> we also have Dracula's oh shit face. That, however, I really enjoy. <laughs> I like really the end too. of this movie. <laughs> They get to a point where clearly the writer was just like, we got to wrap this shit up. Yeah. And it's uh, like, how does Dracula react to this? I, I don't know. He's kind of freaked out. Yeah. He just like pops his head in the door. He's like, oh, oh shit. And then he oh, just shit. runs. <laughs> uh, you'll also find expository street urchins. That I really like that character. Uh, he yeah. shows up for about 30 seconds to very. Mildly cockney like telegram yep. deliverer deliver or some, something. Deliver some information yeah. in a very uninterested kind of a way. Yes, like way. he walked in from a different movie. Yes. Clearly. Um, <laughs> absolutely amazing coats. I'm so jealous of the coats. Everyone is wearing what looks like the coolest and most stylish, but also very functional and warm. Van Helsing has like coat. three great coats in this. Everyone does. Yeah. I mean, Mina has like one with a big fur collar around it. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I was actively thinking, how do I get one of these coats? Cosplayers on the internet, man. I just, uh... It's the only way. <laughs> It's it's up there like this. One of the co- a coat from this movie uh-huh. is up there with my search for a Bane coat. Like yeah. the coat that Bane wears in Rise, uh, See, not Rise, I, I, Dark Knight Rises. Yeah, I think the Bane coat would suit you better. It's a pretty rad coat. It's a really rad coat, but I think it would just suit you. And yeah. And, and so your, here's your the conversation better. that I had with my girlfriend last <laughs> night because I was like, should I get one of these half cape coats? Yes. That Van Helsing wears. Yeah. And I and I said I feel like I'm either gonna look great in it or I'm gonna look like a giant beach ball. And her answer, which was the same as as for that when I said what about that one with the cool fur collar that he has at the end? Yeah, is that she said Peter Cushing is a is a smaller, very slight man. Yes. So these bigger jackets make him you know give him a little bit more presence. Yeah. If I were to wear, if, if you, everyone's never met me, I'm a, a larger man. <laughs> And uh, you'll be shocked to hear from the from the tenor of his voice. Yes. <laughs> Six foot three. Yeah. Uh, Eighty five pounds. Weirdly. <laughs> um, He's essentially one of the monsters from the descent. Yes. Is what we're saying. But if I were to have a coat like that, it would she referred to as putting a hat on a hat <laughs> <laughs> where it's like I'm imposing enough. Yes. That if I were to wear a coat like that, I yes. would, it would be too much. I think if you came out of like if you came around a corner on a foggy mm. night in one of those coats, I'd be like, oh, shit, the ghost of Jack the Ripper is here to kill me. Yep. Yeah. What's all this then? Yeah. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the Bane coat might be I like... I think you could do the... It's not as long. It's not as long and the flowy. Long coats, I know, but like, again, putting a hat on a hat. Yeah, I like yeah. the collar, like the big collar. But that's that the Bane coat's got the big collar. It does, anyway, that's what I like. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have one last thing on my my things you'll find list. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it's one single actor playing every male role in the film. Yes, would you... Uh, we <laughs> determined while watching this movie... <laughs> That Amanda has <laughs> gaunt Englishman, white Englishman face, blindness. face blindness. I just, every single one of them looked like the same person. Mm-hmm. When this movie, and, and you know what? I'm not totally alone because when this movie started, my husband and I were both like, wait a minute, is Jonathan Harker Peter Cushing? Interesting. Like, what is happening? That doesn't look like Peter. Who is that? And then, then Dracula came on. And we were like, is he Peter Cushing? That's so fascinating because. 
Peter Cushing has a pretty I recognizable face. Hard disagree. Really? Gaunt, generic, white, British man. Okay. They all just look the same to me? I mean, the only way I started getting Arthur Holmwood straight is that he's just so much more of a shrinking violet than everyone else in the movie. Yeah. He's like, you were very mean, and I think you should go. Yeah, like, that's Like, that's his fair. whole character. I would say Arthur and Harker kind of are on the same, but yes. like, I think Peter Cushing is has a pretty stark look to him. Look, <laughs> I don't make the rules, Clay. <laughs> There's sort of a there's sort of a continuum. They're all on one continuum. Mm-hmm. And if I only am seeing one or two of them at a time, it's easy for me to be like, wait, which one is that? That's fair. If you put okay. them in the room sure. together, I'm like, oh yeah, obviously. I've done the same thing. Yeah. I, I sp- <laughs> with gaunt British men. <clears throat> the first yeah. time I saw the ring, I spent mm. and this is like I this is what, two thousand and two, so I was not a child. You were spent, convinced that the little girl was actually the boyfriend? No, I was convinced that Naomi Watts was Nicole Kidman. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Yeah. I have face blindness to blonde Australian women, I guess. That, that yeah. Have you seen those pictures? They, there's like a whole bunch of them that look identical now. Like uh, Margot I mean, every, Robbie, everybody gets... the girl from Ready or Not, the girl yeah. from Sex Education. And they're all like the same person. But I I, th- I think there's like a like, there's like trends that that happen you know yeah like like true. certain faces become more popular certain styles all of that yeah and then yeah. people just keep buying them but exactly wearing them to parties yep <clears throat> okay the horror of dracula <laughs> so this is as i mentioned this is the second uh movie from hammer wh- where they were going back mm-hmm. to do the uh old gothic horror movies made famous by universal mm-hmm. the first one was curse of frankenstein which i think was like a year or two before this maybe 57 or 56 and um that one was kind kind of these two movies kind of like blew the doors off of horror movies to a certain extent mm. because um for most of the 50s the 50s was the decade of um sci-fi yeah it was all Space monsters, yep. atomic monsters, yep. your Godzillas, your tarantulas, your Quatermass in the Pit was another, another big uh, Hammer movie. I think that was before this. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, and Universal had essentially shut the doors on most of these characters. Mm-hmm. Like the last movie with Dracula in it, I think, was probably in the 40s. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the last like new classic universal monster was the creature from the black lagoon and that was already into the 50s yeah uh, wolfman was done by this point frankenstein was done yeah they had moved on to stuff like uh this 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 island earth and more sci-fi mm-hmm. stuff and so hammer had been doing sci-fi stuff as well and then they got the idea to do well no one's done a gothic horror movie in probably about 10 years so why don't we take a swing at it and the thing that they brought to the table was full color, mm-hmm. more sex, yep. and more blood. Yep. And it was great. <laughs> uh, Curse of Frankenstein, they had to, um, they got into a bit of a legal, uh, battle's not the right word, but Curse basically Fuffle. Universal, they could not use the uh, Karloff makeup. Oh, and interesting. So the monster in Curse of Frankenstein is is very different. Mm-hmm. Curse of Frankenstein, great movie. Hammer does this really great thing where uh, the monster is different in every movie. Uh, different creatures played mm. by different people. But Peter Cushing is always the same. Ah. He always plays Dr. Frankenstein. Ah. And they make Dr. Frankenstein the monster. Nice. P- Peter Cushing's Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein, is a bastard. <laughs> and he's fantastic. <laughs> and so uh, hot off the success of Curse of Frankenstein comes uh, Dracula. Mm-hmm. And as I mentioned before, they got into another bit of a legal thing where Universal gave them the okay to quote unquote remake Dracula. Yeah. As long as they gave Universal the um, domestic distribution, distribution the yeah. United States distribution, which is a really weird thing to agree, agree to because it's not like, unless that at that time the book was not public domain, there's really no reason they needed to okay it with Universal. Not that I can yeah, think of. I, I don't know if the book would have been public domain back then. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know. I don't like I, I don't know when those rules kicked in versus mm-hmm. when they 
when they would have ended. Yeah, I have no idea. That is interesting, though. I wonder. I wonder why they made the decision to do that. Yeah, I. You know, whatever it is, worked out well. <laughs> Another big hit, yeah. and it launched basically twenty years of Hammer, mm-hmm. this smaller British studio, doing essentially becoming their own genre, where they yeah. they cornered the market on um, gothic horror, uh, usually with <laughs> women in gauzy dresses. Yes. <laughs> Lots of swooning and... Yes, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Until that stuff started to get stale towards the end mm-hmm. and they started doing stuff like Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires, which is a kung fu movie that oh has Oh my God. <laughs> um, and... Wow. Yeah. And the last two outings of Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing, which were Frankenstein... No, sorry. Uh, Dracula AD 1972 which brings Dracula and Van Helsing into the swinging 70s. Oh, my God. Which I think by the time it came out was already like square and yes. not cool. Yeah. And yeah. Then, we had um, moved way past that. Yeah. And then the final one is the Satanic Rites of Dracula, which is a little Sounds bit. Sounds badass. It's, it's a weird movie. It's a little bit Dracula. Mm-hmm. It's a little bit cult movie. Okay. And it's a little bit like James Bond villain. Because huh. in that one, Dracula's plan is that he is going to release a virus kill everybody on earth that way he will have no one to feed on and he can finally die (laughs) oh my god (laughs) wow so like if i'm gonna go out i'm gonna take everyone with me basically yeah he's immortal he can't i mean you would think it would just be easier to be like van helsing just you know hit me and hit me right in the chest let's get it done ask someone to stab to stake you well i guess hey man here's where i sleep during the day i'm gonna leave the door unlocked just come in and don't tell me what you're doing and, and kill me in my sleep. I mean, I guess by the seventh movie, which that was his seventh movie. And it's like Dracula, 25 years later. Yes. You kind of figure, well, even if I get staked in the, someone's going to bring me back. So the only way right. I can not get brought back is if there's no way to do it. I guess. Right. So very strange movie. Uh, readily available. That's one of those ones that shows up on like five. Here's five t- for five dollars. You can you'll get 40, 40 horror movies. <laughs> yeah. Um. <clears throat> but anyway, mm. going back to the beginning. Yes. This version of Dracula, uh, from the beginning, they uh, they they tell you what you're in for to a certain extent by just giving you the nameplate Dracula and then hitting it yeah. with some of that beautiful, bright red <laughs> hammer technicolor blood. Yes. Which like, is like paint. Yes, like vividly red. Like yes. so red it's almost like neon pink. Yes. Yeah. And uh, pretty much, this is a really interesting movie because they are doing the Dracula story, but they're also yeah. kind of not doing the Dracula story because, uh, as I found out later, uh, we were having a discussion about this because they mm. change quite a bit for reasons that we couldn't totally figure out. Yes, they keep a lot of the basic kind of building blocks of the story and then they just sort of reshuffle certain names and like roles mm. but but it's all still kind of there with right. some, some stuff is removed entirely there's not a ton of new stuff inserted in it's sort mm. of just like stripped down and then reshuffle some names and change a couple jobs right yeah so this one starts off with jonathan harker going to the castle yes professional librarian jonathan harker yes. Who hires a personal librarian for their house? Someone with a lot of books. You're telling me you wouldn't do that if you had that enough Absolutely books? Absolutely not. I don't want anyone touching my books. That's fair. <laughs> um, Jonathan Harker comes to the castle, as always. There's one rock out front that's just being splashed with water yes, for some water weird reason. From no visible no source. No source. It's just sprayed with water. Um, but what we learn is that uh, Jonathan Harker is well aware of the nocturnal... Uh, activities of Dracula. He is yes. there specifically to kill Dracula the vampire. Yes, and we learn this through some real time uh, diary narration. Yes. Where as he's writing it, it's read out loud and then when he pauses to get more ink on his pen, yes. it, the narration pauses. Well, you can't write it if you haven't thought it, right? Right, and you can't, you can't think it without writing exactly. it. Exactly, that's yeah. what I always say. <laughs> um, but uh, then we kind of get into the first, mi- well, the, the vampire hunter thing is a, is a pretty big change but the biggest change at the beginning Mm -hmm. is that the uh the the first chunk of this movie ends with the death of jonathan harker yes which is a brand new wrinkle yeah um and also before we get there we have a staking sequence 
which is every time I watch this movie almost makes me want to shut it off because yeah, it, it just, makes you so mad. Yeah, there, I think I've probably mentioned this before, if not on this show and other shows, but there every now and then there are things that characters do mm-hmm. where I just go, there is no way on earth they would make that decision. They're only making that decision because the plot demands them to. Yeah. The number one that always stands out, and this is really stupid, <clears throat> there's an episode of The Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> where Apu is is busy working two jobs or something, and so he's mm-hmm. fallen asleep at the Quickie Mart, and so Homer is going through all of the scratch tickets, holding them up to uh, the light to see which one is the winner. Yes, and he finds a like a five thousand dollar winner scratch ticket, and then Apu mm-hmm. he wakes him up and he goes, Apu, I want to buy this scratch ticket specifically and this Twinkie <laughs> or hot dog, and Apu mm-hmm. says, All right, you know it's going to be this much, and he's like, I only have enough for one of these. <sighs> I'll take the Twinkie. And it's like, that's funny. Yes. But Homer Simpson would not do that. Like, he's <laughs> he's not that dumb. He is in later seasons. Fair. But, like, I just, that's one of those things where it's like, I don't know. You, you're giving him the answer to a lot of his problems, and he's actively not choosing it for a stupid reason. Anyway, this is a, a extremely specific <laughs> roundabout way of me getting to... Harker goes down into the basement. Well, so 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 he's been he's there's a woman in the castle. Yes, there, one bride. One bride. Not three. Just unnamed one. bride yes. who just shows up and is like, "Please help me." And he's like, ah, "I don't know." And she's like, pl- "Pretty please." And he's like, "Okay." Uh, and then he, even though he's an engaged man, decides he needs to hug this, you know, b- b- busty woman. Yeah, I mean, you don't say no to. Hugging a busty woman. I mean, I guess. And then she bites him, mm-hmm. which is what busty women do. Yes. Um, <laughs> known fact. Known That's fact. why no one gets that close to Dolly Parton. Yeah. She will absolutely tear your throat out with yeah. her teeth. If you get past the yeah. gate. Yeah. <laughs> I really, I really wish there was a visual component to this right now. I, f- I bet people can figure out what the gate is. You're just gonna get bit in the neck. Yeah, so best not to try. So, so she bites him, and Dracula comes in, and there's a confrontation, and then mm-hmm. that's how he ends up bitten. Yes. So he knows he's in trouble. Yep. And then he goes down to the crypt. Yes, and he's got his uh, his stake and his hammer, and he's ready to do the job. We've got. Mm-hmm. Dracula asleep in his coffin and yep. uh, busty lady number one asleep in her coffin. <laughs> and he chooses to kill the woman first. Yes. Which, of course, wakes Dracula up. Yeah. He even like looks over at Dracula and is yeah. like, oh, are you in there? Yeah. Yep. If you're he in had there. just, I mean, I know Let if me go he kill kills. your girlfriend. I know if he kills Dracula, movie's over. But like, come on. That's. You- yeah. Like, it would have been so easy to kind of just sneak in one little because he does after he's got he's been bitten he goes up back up to his room mm-hmm. it would have been because he does some like last journal entry being like you know my friend helsing and my dear fiance lucy i've been bitten blah 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 it would have been so easy if there had been one line where he said something like um i make poor decisions <laughs> Or I think that to save myself, I must kill the one who bit me first. Or you know what I mean? Like I am a misogynist. Yeah, I hate women. The end. Yes. Um. But yeah, it would have been kind of easy to th- have like if you're gonna do narration like that. Or I mean, throw in a line where he's sort of like you know, because because it's clear later on in the movie that he and Van Helsing are sort of figuring this vampire killing thing out as they go. Right. So it would have been kind of easy to say like oh he just made it he made a poor assumption yeah but even there though it's like if you kill dracula you can still kill her afterwards <laughs> i'm just saying if no they, i get it if they dramatically wanted to have him kill her first i think there's a better way they could have staged the scene yes that made more narrative sense yes one where dracula isn't literally in the same room yes yes <clears throat> or even if he is just do it differently <laughs> have him in the shadows i don't know whatever yeah yeah i'm sure that they had like 20 minutes to stage the scene before they shot it i'm sure yeah um and so yeah that's the that's the the end of our dracula's castle sequence of the story yes uh what did what do you what were well, your kinda. first impressions of christopher lee's dracula did you like the way that he was introduced did you like the, the way they handled some of the greatest hits of that sequence so I thought his first appearance was a little bit of a letdown. Mm-hmm. I wish there was a little more of a of a moment. It's this weird because it's it's this kind of weird moment where 
there's like five full minutes at the beginning of this movie where Harker has just walked himself into the castle. Mm-hmm. Just lets himself right in. Just yeah. lets himself in. Literally no one's there. And then he just like, I don't know, he kind of looks around for a while. And then he looks like he like kind of examines some art and looks at some stuff. And then he sits down and then he's like getting comfortable. And he like knocks some like silver off the table yeah like, he, like, uh, like a plate or something yeah he knocks a, a plate with a, a delicious looking loaf of bread on it yeah like, under the ground and like that's how that's kind of like <laughs> when dracula appears Does, doesn't the woman appear to him first oh is that when the woman appears i think she might show up does she first. show up first and then run away i think so okay um and then she runs away and then then he's at the top of the stairs I yeah think. but even then it just <laughs> felt a little like I don't know, just kind of weird to have... I, I guess I expected it to be a little more of, of an impact. And I guess it makes sense well, because in this, Jonathan knows he's a vampire. Mm-hmm. So Jonathan's not surprised by his appearance. Sure. Whereas in most other Dracula interpretations and in the in the book... Um, which conveniently, since May, I've been doing that Dracula daily thing mm-hmm. where it goes along with the dates in the oh, book right, and it yeah. sends you what happens on that day and you can you can read through it. It's been really fun. Nice. Uh, I'm almost at the end. Ooh. But like Jonathan's very kind of taken aback by his host's appearance because he's very strange. In the book you're talking. In, in the book, in most yeah. movies, right, right, you know, yeah. he's this either, I mean, think of Bram Stoker's Dracula, the movie, mm-hmm. like... He is very eccentric looking. And I remember. I remember us talking about that. Yes, we did. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it feels a little weird where he's just like, "Oh, hello." <laughs> well, you know, I I I actually think the way that they introduce him is actually pretty clever, mm. but the rest of the movie doesn't back it up, and so oh, okay. Uh, one of the things that I, I learned in doing a little bit of trivia research about this mm-hmm. is the only person. Christopher Lee as Dracula says words to in this movie is Jonathan Harker. Yeah. After that sequence, he talks to no one for the rest of the movie. Yep. yep. And um, what's kind of clever about the way they introduce him is they start with this really uh, scary silhouette shot of him at the top of this big staircase. Mm-hmm. And then he just kind of like jogs down the stairs. Yeah, and yeah. he kind of like comes over and he's like, hello, I'm Dracula. How are you doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and like it's kind of disarming because you're expecting, right? You know, Bell Lugosi, yes. big accent, big boot, which he obviously does have a big booming voice, but he's yeah. a lot more casual. Yes. you know, you see his feet. Um, <laughs> and I w- and I was thinking, like, man, if the rest of the movie had backed this up mm-hmm. and had him interact with more people on and have him be more cat uh, charming and casual and disarming, yeah. I think that's actually a really clever way to to play Dracula. But yeah. for better or worse, after this opening sequence, he just is just there to bite people in the neck and then fade off into the to the darkness. Exactly, and while I, the rest I, of the cast sits in a sits, sits in parlors, in, sits in parlors. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and it, I I think I think you've done a great job of kind of pinpointing why it doesn't his intro doesn't work for me mm-hmm. is because he sort of for the rest of the movie becomes this almost feral creature, like he's. Mm. He's powerful and seductive in certain scenes, but he seems very much to become some somebody or something who is operating on instinct. Sure. Like he, there's lots of physical reactions and physical confrontations and stuff, but yeah, he doesn't talk. It's wild that he doesn't say a word to Van Helsing in this movie. Yeah. The only time that they see each other before the the, the fight is when he pops his head in the room and says, like, oh, yeah, and shit. Goes, oh, shit, and runs away. And he doesn't actually say, I wish right. he said that, but that's what, it, that's <laughs> what his face I kind of would have liked says. it if he had just been like, whoops, and like run back out. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so so I don't know. I, I, I'm intrigued by the idea of having a Jonathan Harker who is fully cognizant of what he's walking into. Mm-hmm. But that concept doesn't work for me at this opening because then nothing no choice he makes f- until he until he's dead makes any sense yeah like I, it's all it is all very plotty like it's all very like we have to hit the beats of the yes, dracula story yes but i just don't understand why make him a vampire hunter who knows he's in a vampire's lair 
mm-hmm. who like why not just make him the accountant who's come from london well, or, where he's kind of like i don't know man i showed up to this place and like no one was here to greet me and there were no servants and then this like pretty but insane lady ran up to me begging me for help and then this scary dude showed up and he was just like oh hey i'm your boss yeah. and like i don't i don't know what's happening i don't know i don't know what i should do i think there's a version where you have harker who is a vampire hunter mm-hmm. masquerading as a librarian and dracula who is a charming transylvanian count yes but actually a vampire um have them have a scene where those mm-hmm. things like come into play where like you yes know, they are talking to each other but each one knows something the other one doesn't right kind of thing. right but they don't really have any scenes together they just kind of have the basic dracula dialogue yeah you know, welcome to my house my assistant is gone for the day have food just don't go in the basement yeah All right, see you tomorrow but yeah, but even then he there there's it's kind of missing some of the basic Dracula dialogue that I wish it had. Mm-hmm. Like like there was one thing that stood out to me where you know, he says I, I oh I will be out very late and you won't see me again until tomorrow. Mm-hmm. But while I'm gone, treat the house like it's your home. Right. Bye. And it's like but you know your vampire girlfriend is hanging out in here. Mm. Why would you tell him to just wa- like part part of the tension in the beginning of the of the book Dracula is that Dracula needs Harker to perform a certain set of services right. to prepare so that he can launch his, his sort of invasion of, of London. Yeah. He needs Harker to do this stuff before Harker dies. Right. And so he needs to keep his vampire brides away from Harker. And the way he does that is he sort of locks down the castle. Right. Like he, it, it's almost like he's got like, um, like airlocks going on where mm. it's like one door unlocks which means the other door has to lock oh sure like okay. you notice that a lot in the book where it's kind of like there's a set of rooms that Jonathan can go to and then he real he starts to realize that all the other doors outside to, to the other areas are all locked right and it's only when he kind of manages to get into an area he's really not supposed to be in the minute he does that he he gets hypnotized by vampire brides right and so I don't know. With this, it was sort of like, yeah, just, yeah, sure, go wander around my castle with my very violent girlfriend, <laughs> um, who will kill you. Yeah, somewhere in the castle. Have yeah. fun, you two. This movie, kind of like <laughs> top to bottom, is sort of um, reminiscent of the Dracula story, <clears throat> in that yes. it's kind of it's giving you the 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 uh, what's the word I'm looking for. Uh, it feels like Dracula. Yeah. But the underlying story isn't really that tight. Right. Because, you know, it's. I think it's one of those things where it's like everybody at this point, everybody knows the story so well mm. that they're probably making some changes just to shake things up. Sure. That's I a good do point. know that they were making a lot of changes for budgetary reasons. Interesting. So, a lot of combinations of the, the way the characters work, the, the way they've changed some of them, yeah. the fact that there are some things that are completely gone. Yep. <clears throat> it was mostly budgetary yeah. to keep things really small. And it really does. It You know, the thing about the Dracula story is it is a pretty big story. Yeah. Like there's the whole boat sequence and he's going yep. from Transylvania to London. Yep. And it's this big, uh, you know, a, lo- a lot of the story is about xenophobia and this idea of the old in- invading the modern modern yeah. world. In this movie, especially you notice this at the end, Dracula's castle seems to be about, let's be generous and say two miles away from <laughs> downtown London. Or I'm sorry, it's not London. That's right. another change. Yes. It's a fictional german town called karlstadt yes which is a bit of a holdover from universal because the universal movies kind of just all happened in this vaguely bavarian european town (laughs) yes which is clearly what they're going for here as well yes where it's like this is we're somewhere austrian or german maybe and that's it we're not going any further east than that (laughs) it's weird that it's it's always bavarian i don't know why that is why did they stop in germany is it like because it's it's not it's not Transylvania, but it's mm. not quite as recognizable as England. Like, they, yeah. why did they do it in the in the Universal movies? Because like Frankenstein takes place in like a Bavarian town. Yeah, that's interesting. In in this one, I was kind of wondering. I was like, are we still close enough to like 
pretty post-war that it's a lot easier to say like yeah the vampires live in germany i don't but i think know. that's too yeah. i think I, I don't i don't think that's correct i just i i think it has to be something like putting it in england or putting it in america if you're in universal movies mm-hmm. is too grounding and you've got yeah. the, you know terrence fisher the director of this one and, and some of the other ones uh, said that he treated these movies more like fairy tales. Okay. And so I think placing it in a, uh, I mean, if you think about fairy tales, yeah, a lot of that stuff is very Bavarian and absolutely, very, you know, yeah, Germanic. like folk tales right. from those that that region. So it probably has something to do with that. Um, sure, I'd buy I'd buy that as part as a partial <laughs> explanation. Yes. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, as far as Dracula's motivation, mm-hmm. uh really the only thing that makes him leave his castle like the the driving factor seems yeah. to be lucy because he cuz when yeah. when hark uh, he needs a new girlfriend yeah when van helsing goes to dracula's house mm-hmm. um he finds that harker's uh photograph of lucy has been smashed and it's been taken taken out yes so the only thing driving him to i guess yeah you're really right like this yeah. movie is about dracula trying to find a new girlfriend yes <laughs> Well, because so like this whole the, the whole opening to me is like, <laughs> I mean, so Jonathan's been bitten. He goes and he stakes the the, the bride, which is your favorite scene. Um, yeah. And then when by the time Van Helsing kind of follows Jonathan's footsteps and tracks him down and gets to the castle, when he goes down into the crypt, instead of a bride or Dracula in the crypt, it's Jonathan. Right. And it's sort of like, okay, Harker killed his girlfriend. So Dracula went, okay, you can be my girlfriend now. And then Van Helsing kills Harker. Mm -hmm. And Dracula's like, well, shit. Now where am I going to get a girlfriend? I guess I have to go to town and take the one I know is now single because Jonathan Harker's dead. Yeah. That's the other thing that's so funny, though, is (laughs) Van Helsing just like just goes to Dracula's castle. Yes. After he hasn't heard from, like, yeah. <laughs> again, this is, uh, like, the amount of space between these two areas <laughs> yeah. is... It's like half a day, maybe. 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 Yeah. And it's, and it's like, it's so strange to me that it didn't occur to me until I was watching it this time how weird yeah. it is that Van Helsing just goes to the castle yeah, just yeah. to check he's, it out. He's like, look, I, I, I'm I just going to go see if he's there. Yeah. Yeah. It's very strange. Um, But, yeah, the, the, the they lose... uh. Once Dracula leaves the castle, it becomes a lot of it. Kind of, it goes from a, a beginning that is fairly kind of action heavy yes. for the yeah, most part. Yeah, yeah. There's there's some suspense in there. There's there's like creeping down into the crypt and being like, what's going to happen? And it kind of goes from there to <laughs> a lot of drawing room scenes. Yes. And that's not to say I don't enjoy them because. Mm-hmm. As I was watching this, I was overtaken by how much I enjoyed how cozy this movie is. Yes. I introduced you to the term hygge. Yes. Uh, great coats. Mm-hmm. Very, very warm. There's, Roaring fireplaces. This is probably the Dracula movie that has the most scenes of people just casually snacking, which I enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> me too just like there's like a scene yeah. towards the end where it's like after mina has been bitten where it's mina arthur and van helsing yeah. just like hanging out in a really nicely decorated victorian drawing room talking yeah. about stuff just like having lunch which and like is snacking. actually pretty accurate to the book that's true there yeah. are a lot of scenes in the book where it's like well we had to all sit down like we, we'd all been off doing our own tasks that day and we had to sit down and fill each other in and while we did mina made tea and the cook brought us sandwiches mm-hmm. and we all sat around and had a brandy and yeah it is like that kind of very cozy victorian domestic scene it's just so interesting because in the book and in so many like movie interpretations you get the sort of other stuff going on too because you still have characters like dr seward sure playing yeah. main main roles where he's in a, he works in an insane asylum insane asylum so you have like gibbering madmen and renfield mm-hmm. doing his i'm eating spiders thing no renfield in this no renfield yeah. in this um you have the Demeter yep. kind of slowly approaching, or you have reports of like a massive wolf-like creature has been roaming the countryside. Like 
you sort of have all of these other kind of background set pieces going on usually and this one strips all of those out Mm -hmm. so it really is just like three people hanging out in a parlor yeah and and the the character changes are if you are (laughs) as as you the way you reacted as we're watching it which was uh, a lot of exclamation points in all caps all caps um the changes to the how the character makeup makeup works is interesting where Jonathan Harker is engaged to Lucy, whose last name is Homewood. Yes. Who is the sister of Arthur Homewood. Who is who she's supposed to marry in the book. In the book. And Arthur Homewood is married to Mina. Who is who Jonathan, who Jonathan does is, marry in the book. Yes. Dr. Seward is the Homewood family doctor. Yeah, he's just like a that he's, he's just he's like a for physician. Like one scene, yeah. Two scenes, yeah. Van Helsing is not Seward's colleague he's harker's mm-hmm. and he's young yep um that he's... apparently was one thing that peter cushing requested mm. because in the, he said in the book van helsing is like an old kind of doddering yes professor and he's yeah. like i really don't want to do that yeah he doesn't want to have I... to put on a dutch accent like, the whole time i'm like 43 can yeah. i just be like young <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, sure. can i just wear a cool coat he and... was kind of like the first action van helsing yeah absolutely because yeah, this yeah, is yeah. sort of this is really i think the first one that pushes van helsing to the forefront yes usually van helsing is just like a supporting character at best yeah he he's he's the the older more knowledgeable one but he's not the one who is physically doing a lot of the the action scenes right yeah, yeah. this this is the this is the movie that really kind of cements the dracula versus van helsing kind of dynamic yeah, absolutely. And now that I'm thinking about it, in the book, I don't think you ever get... Sometimes some characters will transcribe letters that Van Helsing has sent them, but you never get a section of the book from Van Helsing's point of view. Mm-hmm. Like, he's yeah. not... Oh, a, really? Yeah. Interesting. He's more like Arthur or Quincy, who never speak from their own point of view. Yeah. The main characters in the book are... You get you get stuff from Seward. You get a lot from Dr. Seward obviously Jonathan Harker and Mina hmm. and those are the people you know actually keeping notes and and, and writing the book I kind of like that yeah I like keeping him a little bit on the periphery yeah um <laughs> in this one he is doing a lot of documentation he's oh, taking yeah. a lot of uh <clears throat> a on lot his, of notes on his phonograph on his phonograph <laughs> I uh <laughs> Watching him, watching him record his notes on this on this phonograph, mm-hmm. I just the the, the modern note taking uh, software yeah. th- that I'm aware of now. <laughs> I just I was kind of hoping that he would be like, and that is why only crosses may destro- destroy Dracula. Idea for song. <laughs> Dun 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 bow bow dun 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 bow bow. Chorus. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting mix. It's an interesting mix up of characters. Uh, yes. Yeah, so Lucy is the one who, because Harker's dead now, she's she's the one who Dracula targets first. Mm-hmm. Still, which is the same as the book, right? And I really want to talk about Lucy in this sure. because. Yeah, please do. I thought the way she was handled was really interesting Mm -hmm. in this. And I actually really liked the Lucy stuff in this where like she's been sort of waiting for her, her fiance to come home and she's sick and it's sort of, I don't know. Are we supposed to like, is it that she was sick and then Dracula came for her or is she sick because dracula started coming i think by the time we meet her yeah dracula has already gotten to her okay that's what i thought but yeah. i wasn't quite because, sure because we because uh they call van helsing mm-hmm. to come see her mm. and so like this is past like van helsing is kind of like doing his own thing so some right. time has passed right right okay that makes sense um but i really i really like like there's this there's the scene where um 
we see for the first time like what's going on with Lucy Mm -hmm. where like she's left in her room at night and her room has like a door directly out onto like a terrace or a patio or something. Yeah, it's what every young daughter's room has. I mean, I wish mine had. Um, Every father. I I wish mine does and did now. Um, (laughs) Every father wants that for their daughter. Yeah, just an easy way to get out of the house with no one noticing. Or to have people come in. Yeah. Yeah, unnoticed. Yeah, Yeah, it's the perfect setup. Mm -hmm. Um. But I love it because she sort of waits, like you see her, like she's very quiet and demure and she's very sick and all of this stuff. And then the minute she's left alone at night, it's like a change of of personality, like Mm. entirely. And I think that's really interesting because it's kind of like you can see either like there's either a level of corruption that's already happened to her or she does in some weird way want this or enjoy Mm -hmm. it like there's a really interesting like you could argue it either way because everybody leaves and she like gets ready like she know her her secret boyfriend is coming over Mm -hmm. and she makes sure let the doors open so he can just come in and she like fixes her hair and she like takes her the buttons of her nightgown down so she can like expose her neck Mm -hmm. and then she just lays back and waits and just stares at the empty doorway (laughs) Right, <laughs> and the music kind of crescendos, and then the scene cuts to whatever Van Helsing's doing. Mm-hmm. And I just loved, I loved that scene a lot because either she's being compelled to do this, or she's partially into it. Right. And I think that's one of the things you were saying earlier, where the Hammer movies kind of introduced the concepts of like sex and violence to yeah. these movies, and like she's into it. <laughs> Yeah, I I know that that was one of the the intentions for this was to uh, not only present Dracula as a as a bit sexier, mm-hmm. but also to have this sort of underlying uh, subtext of uh, at least Mina specifically, yeah, um, being into it. Yeah, like, like there's a there's a sexual repression on her and kind of like what we uh you know as everybody remembers we talked about at length yeah i mean everybody should know this bram stoker's dracula yeah um there's a a sexual repression element that Mm -hmm. is countered by dracula i guess uh, (laughs) the the scene where where she kind of like comes through the door and has that like yes on her face (laughs) apparently they couldn't get that shot like they couldn't get the right uh, emotion Uh. and so the director said okay just imagine you've come home from having the best sex you've ever had in your life. <laughs> and then they got it on the first take. So like that's nice. the vibe yeah. that they're going for. Yeah. But again, it's like I wish it was a little bit more of a through line. Because yeah. like Lucy we have no idea what Lucy's relationship with Harker was. So Right. We never get to kind of see them <clears throat> yeah, together. It's not like she was repressed or anything i don't know like we I don't, mean, maybe, well, maybe maybe she was because yeah. they weren't married yet true you know like you're, you're not back then no 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 you're not you're not supposed to be having sex i yeah. mean obviously plenty of people did but you weren't supposed to be having sex before marriage mm-hmm. and she seems like she's from like an upper class family and everybody knows back then after you got married you got to have sex once a year <laughs> to procreate and that was it yes and you had to lay back and think of england yes um but yeah so you know like supposedly lucy's not having sex Mm -hmm. and then this you know the tall dark foreigner is arriving and sneaking into her bedroom at night right yeah Yeah. and arthur is it's interesting to me too that they're they're they're, they're playing it this way because Mm -hmm. arthur is very much all of the wet blanket that parker usually is (laughs) yes which makes sense that mina would be into it but like van helsing's kind of like a sexy dude yeah, like but none of these women are dating or married to him. But they they don't even like sh- pass have passing interest in him. You know, like it would be it would be something if like he was outwardly chaste or something like, you know, if if Mina yeah. was kind of like giving him the elbow and he's like I have work don't what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like but Yeah, see I I kind of like that they didn't do that though yeah. because I think it shows how much like the the expectations and the bonds of society keep mm. people in these sorts of like behavioral paths that they think they're supposed to be on. Mm. Like Van Helsing is, is part of their society. Right. You know, like he, he's, he's a known quantity. Like he's not interesting to fantasize about because, Mm. you know, he's a kind of, he's another white 
British dude. They all look the same. <laughs> Everyone knows they're the same even, actor. Even the tall, dark foreigner in this is a white British dude. I, I know, but you know in this, he's supposed to be exotic. Right. yes. Like, yeah. And he has like an animal magnetism going on mm-hmm. where he is able to foster their kind of more base desires outside of what's considered like right and proper Mm. because he has vampire powers, you know, like he can, because he's not human, he's able to sort of unlock something in them that a human man in their world cannot do. Mm. You know, it's, it's sort of a mix of like being compelled, but also being given permission. Sure. In a way that, like, you just never, like, a proper British man would never want you to behave that way. They wouldn't want a woman who acts that way. So you can't act that way with them. Right. Because it would be like, no, now you're, now you're sullied and nobody wants that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I I mean, obviously, I'm always going to be more interested if they push this stuff, but it's 1958. I think think they pushed it pretty far for 1958. Yeah, that's that's the thing is I do think they do a pretty good job with it, all things considered. Yeah. and I do. I think that that like, stuff. I love that. I love that. <laughs> Mina's hiding him in the basement. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. She moved her boyfriend into the basement. That's where it starts to get a little dicey. Where it's like, I love we it. Need it's to so funny. Figure out how to get out of this quickly. We got not yeah. Hammer. Hammer movies were um, famous for being ninety minutes on the dot. This one was like eighty one. <laughs> yeah, it's a sh- they're short <laughs> movies. They're not long movies. Yeah. Um, if, if the credits weren't rolling by ninety minutes, you know, yeah, have, in we've 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 spoken almost as long as this movie. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think they I think they do some interesting stuff there. Yeah, uh, and also I like that that uh, they can do that stuff without really making a moral judgment call about it. Because yeah. obviously Dracula's bad; he's killing people. But like. Van Helsing is not exactly like a moral arbiter or anything, you know? It's not like right. he's a paragon of virtue. And, and maybe so maybe the thing I was saying earlier is it's good they didn't do that because he's there to kill the monster. Right. He doesn't give a shit who's sleeping with the monster. Right. Like, it's not about that. He's like, this is a monster. I need to kill this monster. It has nothing to do with him being like, uh, you know, a, a, a priest or, or someone who is... Right upholding the virtues of of the bible or whatever which is interesting because he does seem to have like a jacket's worth of crosses <laughs> like he opens his jacket it seems like and he probably has just like crosses 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 i'm fine with that what i don't like is the um i'm just gonna pick up two sticks and put them across one another and <laughs> so go ah! apparently that was peter cushing's idea exactly because when they got to that scene he's like i've had every size cross you could possibly have can we do something different to make this interesting got it and so yeah. he was like what if i just took these two and they were like, yeah, okay sure and it was apparently also his idea to do the run down the table and jump for the oh the thing which he actually did oh good for him that, that was pretty good yeah um yeah how do you do you do you feel like the changes work for you or would you prefer they had just done because the thing with the Hammer movies for me, the Hammer Dracula uh-huh. movies, this is not my... F- I, I really like this movie. Mm-hmm. This is not my favorite Hammer Dracula. Oh. Um, I think the Hammer formula gets a little bit better as the things go on and they mm. can have a little bit more sex and violence. Yeah. Uh, less... They kind of... They have like a big swing where they go from a lot more implied stuff in this one mm-hmm. to just showing everything towards the yeah. end. I like it somewhere in the middle. <laughs> somewhere in the middle. That's fair. And uh, <clears throat> weirdly enough, in the Hammer Dracula movies, uh, I guess in this one, he uh, Dracula only has like 16 lines or something. Jeez. But in some of the other ones, he has even fewer. They're, the next one they made, he has no lines. See, that just feels like such a waste to me. It does. But let me, let me, let me uh, make my case. Okay. So- Weirdly enough, Dracula is sort of the way they end up playing him in this is he's kind of a background figure, right? Mm. And we had talked previously uh, on the other episode. About, <laughs> Which you all should remember. Right, right. About how in the book he kind of goes away for a long time and yeah. becomes this sort of looming background presence. Yeah. So when you have a movie like this where you're trying to cram 
the whole Dracula story into 90 minutes, Mm -hmm. he kind of gets pushed to the side and becomes this sort of like background presence for better or worse. In the later movies, they kind of lean into that a lot more. Mm. So he is this background presence that is the sort of the driver of the story, but he's not necessarily like a main character. Okay. And, you know, sometimes sometimes he has lines, sometimes he doesn't. Um, and there's one, my favorite one, which is Dracula Has Risen from the Grave, which I want to mm. talk about as one of the wild cards eventually, where mm. it's... He's there. He's biting people. He's turning people into vampires and stuff. Yeah. But the story isn't about him. Hmm. It's about the other characters. And I kind of find that, at least for Hammer, Dracula becomes more interesting to me as when they use him as a jumping off point to tell other stories. Sure. Because you're kind of... The problem with doing the Dracula thing is you either got to do the book yep. or you got to do something different. But Something even in the book, different. he's like you were saying, even in the book, he's not the focal character for much of the book. Right. Like he's causing the action to happen, but he's not. Yeah, he's he's not the, the like the character that we're focused on. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, I'm 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 fine with that. And I, I do think it's sort of like. Because I do very much ascribe to sort of the ideas that like. Sometimes people's favorite characters in a, in a movie or a franchise or whatever are not the ones that should have their own oh sure standalone yeah. thing. I'm looking at you, Han Solo. I was going to say I'm looking at you, Boba Fett. And <laughs> Boba Fett, yeah, where they're like the part of the reason that they are so compelling and interesting and they seem so cool mm-hmm. is that we don't need to know oh, sure. yeah. about what their high school experience was like. Right, like they can just kind of, they they seem to have just sprung fully formed into this world as this like total badass either good guy or bad guy who needs to be either brought into the fold as one of the team or defeated yeah like god forbid you learn character through action instead of right telling extended backstory yes which all kind of tend to fall into some sort of cliche right um Everything you can imagine about those characters is always infinitely more interesting than yes. if you try and like make a standalone movie about them. Right. And so I'm I'm okay with Dracula not being the focus of of big chunks of the movie. I think for me it's just like Christopher Lee is Yeah, it's a waste of Christopher Lee. Yeah, yeah. and and I think like I'm I'm thinking more and more about what, when we were talking about the beginning and you were sort of saying that he 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 appears as this like tall looming shadow very imposing but then he kind of just like you know hops down the stairs and is very much like oh so glad you're here hi i'm count dracula welcome here let me help you with your bag (laughs) like and i think he is he has that sort of genteel attitude and i think it would have been really interesting to have a little bit more of that in the movie at Mm. some point to sort of draw the juxtaposition more clearly between what Dracula might have been like as a person mm. versus what he has, is now as a vampire. Mm. And like, is, is, you know, like, is he pulling down a sort of like a mask, like a version of his human self to put on, to put the humans around him at ease? Mm. And then is, is that mask coming off when he's the more animalistic vampire or is that human self still in there and then he's just overtaken by instincts? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I feel like yeah. that's an interesting line with this with this specific Dracula. Yeah, which they don't, I mean, he's yeah, not they don't on have a, Yeah, they don't really to do. have a chance yeah. to, to get into it, which is always a little bit of a bummer, especially where because of some of the changes they make to this version, they've stripped out a lot of not only extra sort of like action in terms of plot, but like they've stripped out a lot of other characters, Mm, which means that you're not left with a whole hell of a lot. Like, yeah, if the women are in a total vampire swoon, which seems to be where they're at for most of the movie, then you've got Dracula as this sort of evil cipher in the background. Mm -hmm. You're really just left with Van Helsing and the wet blanket, Arthur Holmwood. Yeah. Which doesn't give you a lot in terms of, like, character work. <laughs> well, yeah. The the thing that stood out to me as we were watching it the other night was, I was like, geez, 
most of the scenes that Van Helsing has in the middle of this movie are uh-huh. basically just like exposition about how vampires work. Yes. And which is really funny because one of my favorite things about the Hammer Dracula vampire movies mm-hmm. is as they move forward, it posits a world where like everybody kind of knows how it works. Yeah. Like they yeah, never we can dispense with this. Yeah. When, when <laughs> people are talking about Dracula or vampires are like, oh, vampires. Oh, yeah. You got to hit him in the chest with a stake. Like everybody yeah. knows how vampires work, yeah. except in this one where the whole movie is spent uh, with the, our main characters going like, so I think what we need to do is yes. put a stake through his heart because I think he might be a vampire. And then uh, I suppose we should go before it gets dark. Yes. Can't do, can't they turn into bats? He's like, well, no, not not this one. They can't. He can't do that. That's just which apparently was a, a, a specific choice by the screenwriter to take oh. away more of his magical powers ah. to make him a little bit more uh, grounded and visceral. Yeah. And not so fairy tale esque. Yeah. Interesting. But yeah, it's it's too bad because it's there's so much um there's so much I think meat still on the bone <laughs> <laughs> for Christopher Lee. I mean it's just it's wild to me thinking thinking about it now that there's yeah. they don't have a single scene that's Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing like talking to each other. Yeah. Like yeah. I would watch a whole movie of if it was if this movie was Peter Cushing as Van Helsing shows up at Dracula's castle yes. and then they talk for 90 minutes, yeah. it would be my favorite Dracula movie. I mean this so it's really funny to me because you saying that and it makes me in my head go like why don't you like the TV show Hannibal? I I, because, I like, will give it another shot. So I need to give much it of it shot. is essentially like if you think of Hannibal as a Dracula figure. Yeah. And then you think of Will as a as a Van Helsing or Harker I, or Jonathan Harker figure. So much of it is just the two of them having extraordinarily yeah. tense dinners. I think I'd probably <laughs> like it more now. The thing I didn't like about Hannibal was mm-hmm. I I was taking Hannibal a lot more literally than I think I should have. Yeah. And it was just like the I know I've I know I've said this before, but like mm-hmm. the the cases that he had to track down yes. were so preposterous. Yes. And so ridiculous that I was like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be ta- like it's 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 played so seriously. Uh-huh. But what he's investigating is insane. Yes. Like it's a, a, a totem pole made out of severed torsos. Yeah. And I'm like, is this not supposed <laughs> to be like kind of funny? Like, am I, is this supposed to be as serious as they're playing So it? I looked at it always as, uh, on the one hand, that, like, this is just a parallel universe that's ever so slightly parallel to our own, yeah. where, like, extremely snooty art murderers are everywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, I will say, in that show, later seasons, you get less and less of that mm. murderer of the week. Sure. And a lot more of the ones you do get tie back to Hannibal and his treatment of patients ah, okay. he's had. So he sort of has set up things. Anyway, <laughs> off topic. But when you say tense dinners between like foes mm-hmm. in like a sumptuous location, that's what comes to mind for me. Yeah. Yeah, I if you if you think of Will as a, as as Jonathan Harker and um Lawrence Fishburne's character as Van Helsing. Yeah. You could oh, you I could forgot he was in that show. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if if they had done a Hannibal TV See, show, you didn't talk about Giallo at all, and I talked about Hannibal. I mentioned it a little bit at the top. <laughs> if they did a version of Hannibal that was Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing talking to each other for yeah. twelve episodes, yeah, I would watch that. That's, show. I mean, it's very similar. Yeah, uh, my favorite scene in the movie is probably uh, the staking of Lucy. Yes, that's very well done. That yes. whole Lucy sequence is very cool. I loved that. I thought she was so scary because she does seem like herself in a weird way. Still, mm. like, like, you know what I mean? Like, she just kind of, she's still like in a human body, right? You know, like she walks through the woods up to the little girl Tanya and is like, "Yeah, let's come. We'll go over here and we'll play." You know, that was another scene though where I was like, I feel like. It must have just been like a time constraint or something. Because like the first time that you see Lucy as a vampire, mm-hmm. it's like a close up of her peeking over some tree branches. And I was like, this is the most interesting way they could shoot this. Yeah. Like I'm thinking like there's no like, I don't know, there's no more, there's not a ton of atmosphere. It's, there's a lot of fog. There is. There's these 
Hammer movies love fog. I also love fog. So, but I don't know. There was just a couple scenes like that where I was like, it feels like they could have staged this a little bit creepier. But I did think that the Lucy sequence was yeah. very good. And yeah, the staking is great. Like the mm. staking, they follow through with Lucy's staking in a way that they yes. don't at the beginning. Yeah, which is actually kind of surprising because usually yeah. you want to do that stuff right at right up front. Mm-hmm. But you get man. Not only do you get with Lucy, the well, stake, she gets burned by the cross on her forehead, right? Yep. Very much like Fright Night, which yep. I'm sure that's probably where I came from. Um, not only do you get like a close up of the stake going in, the blood coming out, yep. You get this awesome shot of Van Helsing just like the final hit, just, yeah, like, the driving arm that raised. fucking thing right. And through Arthur Holmwood like crying into his sweater in the background. I I actually really it's <laughs> it's so over dramatic, but yeah. I, I really like how when he hits her the first time. They cut to Arthur, who grabs his own chest. Yeah, yeah. He's like recoiling. Yeah, like, it's pretty good. Yeah, like physically <laughs> recoiling on her behalf. Yeah. Yeah, I loved that scene. I thought that was great. And uh, your finale, of course, mm-hmm. is a hand-to-hand combat fight with Dracula and Van Helsing. That If only they had wire again, fights. Again, I think there's just stuff <laughs> where it's like we didn't have time to figure out. A, yeah, like, we didn't have time. <laughs> we didn't have budget. Like the <laughs> when Dracula's choking him out. And he pretends to die. Yeah. <laughs> and Dracula's like, oh, yeah. well, that was oh, easy. Oh, well, he's done. I'll just toss him over here. Yeah. That was hilarious because it's like, you can't tell me that, uh, that, that of all creatures, Dracula can't tell when a living thing right. has died. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't buy that Dracula falls for that. Um, but like the final sequence with, I like the candlestick cross thing. Yeah. Uh, I, I just w- wish, I just wish he at least like dipped it in holy water or sure. something. I don't know. I, well, I was telling you, you should watch the next movie, The Brides of Dracula. Yes. Which Christopher Lee is not actually in, but mm. uh, Peter Cushing is. Oh. But it ends with uh, Peter Cushing killing the vampire by, uh, they're inside a windmill. <laughs> and the vampire starts to run away. And Peter Cushing, I think the windmill's on he fire. He just points to the windmill and there's two things that cross each no, other. No, it's better than that. Oh, boy. I think the windmill's on fire, if I remember correctly. Okay. Because these movies, <laughs> Hammer movies always end with whatever the final location is in bursting into flames. Mm-hmm. And so they climb out onto the front of the windmill. And the vampire's running away through the shadow of the windmill. Uh-huh. So Peter Cushing jumps onto the thing oh, onto the no. the uh the sail of the windmill yeah and pulls it down so it turns into a giant cross oh, which geez. casts the shadow of a giant cross onto the ground <laughs> right as the vampire <laughs> is running into that it's awesome it's great that's that's really dumb it's oh come on <laughs> it's it, it's it, that's like it, it, no, it's, it's the whole, so inventive the whole point of a cross is that it's supposed to be the religious symbol not just two things like one thing across another thing yeah but come on it's, it's, yeah, that's, no, it's, that's, it's, not, that's no fun <laughs> i want to see i want to see them do something interesting like that i'd much rather they do that than just be like sure, yeah, but if they just had a, a priest from them <clears throat> on the bottom just screaming and blessing the windmill <laughs> maybe maybe Van Helsing in this universe is actually a priest, but yeah. he does just doesn't like everything he touches is just turns yeah, to God. Yeah, he just doesn't you know advertise it. That's yeah. all. I mean, it would wouldn't be bad. It'd be a, it'd yeah. be a good thing to have on your resume. Yeah. Um. So yeah, what are your thoughts on this one overall? I mean, o- overall, I, overall, I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. It is sort of like in the more in the vein of the old gothic horror movies. With like you know, it's it's starting to sort of do some different stuff, mm-hmm. um, but I mean it's it's just like it's three it's three steps up from like a kitschy Vincent Price movie, sure, you know which yeah. I love. Mm-hmm. I'm all about those, so I'm into it. I I think it's a good time. I think some of the changes they made, while I understand some stuff was eliminated and simplified for like budgetary stuff, I think like swapping Lucy and Mina was just like why though yeah you know like there there were just some things where it felt very much like you were saying it was kind of like well we dracula's been done a bunch we need to do something to make make it different yeah so we'll just change this um but overall i thought it was really fun i thought it was a great like fall or winter time watch because Mm. of all the cozy 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 victorian homes and great coats and things like that i probably mentioned this before but i i have in the past few years become a big fan of uh, Victorian era Christmas. Oh yeah. So like anything in that ballpark. Yeah. Like so like this is not a Christmas movie obviously, but like it has that sort of drawing room, big warm coat, 
kind of vibe to it. Yeah, it wouldn't take a lot to tweak this movie into what you're talking about. Yeah, like if that a few weird, more pine boughs, that and weird giant stove thing, oh, whatever that that thing Van in the Helsing. corner was. I don't know what the hell that thing I have was. No idea. It looked like the the pod from the fly or something. <laughs> uh, turn that into a Christmas tree. You've got yourself a Christmas. Yeah, tree. yeah. They've never done a Dracula movie set at Christmas. Let's do it. I feel like does that. Would he get killed pretty All quick? All I want for Christmas is your blood. Blood, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, this this is, as I said, it's I, I really like this movie. I think I like this movie. This is a tough one to really appreciate if you didn't see it at the time, I mm. think, because this was such a change for horror movies. Yeah. Yeah, I would, lo- I would love to, like, this would be quite an undertaking, but, like, if you were watching... Maybe not every Dracula movie, but like a representative sample across time mm-hmm. of the different sort of eras of how Dracula was done. I think it would be really interesting to see this as like part of a broader progression. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I tend to, as I said, I, I, I think I like the Hammer movies when they get a little bit more, mm. when the, the dresses get a little bit more gauzy <laughs> and the blood gets a little bit more red. And the women get prevalent. a little bit more busty. Well... I'm not going to say no. <laughs> but uh but I do like this for what it is. I do like yeah. for that yeah. it was the the starting point for the Hammer horror thing. And I I do really there's like the Hammer stuff comes with a certain level of kitsch to it at this point. Yeah. But it's like you said, it's like the Vincent Price thing where you yeah. you're either on board with it at this point or you're not. Right. And I just I I've always loved it. I don't I don't know. Yeah. I I just love the gothic horror in general. I do too. I wish more people made them. Yeah, like, it seems like everybody that tries to make one now, it's it crazy expensive. Yeah, but like, like they try to go really big budget with it, yeah. and it's like if if these movies teach us nothing else, it's that you can have some really great set pieces and moments. Oh yeah, with pretty small budgets. Yeah, these movies, <laughs> I think these movies cost like eight bucks. Yeah. to make, <laughs> which in today's money is fifty eight bucks. <laughs> yeah, yes. But uh, but yeah, I I, I wish. I wish it was more. I wish something would make it a little bit more in vogue, yeah. Uh, or at least where more of the stuff could be produced. Because I do. Yeah. I, it is my favorite. It is probably my favorite kind of scary story setting is the Victorian, you know, yeah. the cemeteries and stuff. But, yeah. And I'm sure we'll come back to it at a certain point. Oh yeah. In future movies. <laughs> um, this time is, is a flat circle. Clay. Yes. Interestingly, uh, Christopher Lee played Dracula seven times. How? But he did not come back for a second movie for eight years. Wow. Yes. Dracula Prince of Darkness, which was the second outing for him as Dracula, was eight years after that, after this. Um, and then after that, um, <laughs> that was the movie where he has no dialogue because mm. he read the script and he said, I'm not saying these lines. <laughs> <laughs> so they said, okay, what if you just don't say anything? Yeah. He's like, okay. Yeah. I'll just <laughs> glare at the camera. That's fine. And uh, later movies, at least once, I don't know if they did this multiple times, but basically what they would do is they would green light the movie mm-hmm. before he had the chance to say no. Oh. And so then when he was like, I don't want to do this, they would say, well, we're already in production. You're going to put a lot of people out of work if you don't <gasps> do this movie. And he's like, fuck. All right, fine. Oh. Yeah. So he just got punished for like two decades for being a nice guy. Kind of, yeah. Sort of. Um, and uh, Peter Cushing played uh only played there was there were seven christopher lee draculas but only f- four van helsing movies oh and one of them didn't have christopher lee in it so he uh P- peter cushing does brides of dracula which okay. is a n- couple years after this yeah and then he doesn't come back until um dracula 80 1972 and interesting because i think of rights. them as such a such a pairing yeah. They did a ton of other stuff together. Okay. Like they are, are always popping up. Yeah. But as far as Dracula and Van Helsing, it was they only weren't. three times. Oh, yeah. interesting. Hmm. Yeah. How do you feel about the placement on this, on our list? It's number 105. I mean, that feels a little, like, high to me in the sense of, like, closer to one than I would have thought. Yeah. 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 Like, 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 I'm not... I'm not upset about it, but it's just surprising that this is 105. 
Yeah, like, I feel like if you told if you told me this was like one thirty or one forty something, I'd be like, yeah, okay. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, I think I would put it on the the closer side of one thirty, like under okay. one thirty. Um, because I I do think it does have a lot of historical value to it. Sure. Uh, but as far as like punch and like what the content is, mm-hmm. I could see I can see it being I can see it having a lot more stuff in front of it. Yeah. Um, that being said, I do really like it. Yeah. Yeah. And, no. Totally. Uh, I I think it's very much worth having on the list. Mm-hmm. I think it's very much worth if you like any sort of Dracula, vampire, gothic horror stuff. I think it's definitely worth watching. Yep. You know. I would say, and uh, just just to say it, since we've kind of talked about it a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, of the seven Christopher Lee Draculas, I mm-hmm. would say. Five of them are probably worth watching. Oh, okay. There's one of them that is terrible. <laughs> I was gonna say five out of seven's pretty good. Like to say it's like worth watching. There's like, like worth watching is like like the hammer. You're, you're there for the hammer stuff. Like, yeah, it, it's not the greatest movie ever made. No, no, no. But but it it does the stuff. It's fun. But yeah, I mean, I I don't even know if I would tell anybody that like five of the Friday the Thirteenth movies that's were true. worth watching. That's a good point. So. Yeah, there is there is definitely five out of seven is a pretty good ratio to say yeah, check it out when you have a free hour and a half. There is specifically one of them that is actively bad, and was is just it the 1972 one. No, that one's actually pretty fun. <laughs> Because it's so weird. Yeah. Um, it's Scars of Dracula, which is one of the most... It was... Oh, it's abysmal. It's just a chore to sit through. Oh, no. It's not fun. Uh, AD 1972 is pretty fun. It's like... It is definitely a, an oddball movie. Satanic Rites of Dracula is... I'm like weirdly interested in that one. It's pretty weird. <sighs> I think even just to like watch the first twenty minutes and be like, what? It, like just to, just to get a sense. Yeah, it's definitely Hammer flailing with mm. their franchise. Yeah, because we're at the beginning, they were definitely setting the trend. By mm. the end of their run, they were chasing trends. Got so it. So that's got why it. Satanic Rites is cult movie, a cult movie, and yeah. But there, there's yeah. a I I highly recommend people digging into the Hammer catalog. There's some really mm-hmm. cool movies out there, like uh, The Devil Rides Out is really cool. Ooh. And uh, uh, what's the other one that I really like? Uh, Kiss of the Vampire is a lot of fun. Oh. The other Frankenstein movie, Frankenstein Must Be Destroyed, is my favorite Frankenstein movie. That's the one we're going to do eventually. Cool. Uh, many of these movies directed by Freddie Francis, who was the... <laughs> cinematographer on the innocents oh so they wow. look really great yeah i mean this this movie is beautiful yeah yeah, yeah. silly neon blood and everything it's oh, yeah. still like just lovely to look at and the music is by uh james bernard who does mm. apparently the story behind the theme in this mm. is that he uh he took the word dracula and made a a, a theme out of the word so that's why all of the <laughs> all of the the melody is like because it's Dracula. <laughs> that's like the dumbest thing I've ever heard, but it also really works for this movie. <laughs> it also worked with Superman. John Williams did the same thing when he wrote Superman. Uh, Superman. Yeah, I get yeah. it. I get it. So, so yeah, wherever yeah. you can find inspiration, yeah, I guess. Yeah. But anyway, um, I think that is going to do it for us for the horror of Dracula. Hopefully you didn't mind me talking hammer facts at you. No, no, I, I, you know much more about all of that than <laughs> I do, and I enjoy getting taught. Uh, as I mentioned before, the next movie we are going to be doing is Suspiria. After yes. we get our minds blown by seeing Goblin perform it live for we us, we will never be the same. And then uh, following that will be our next wild card, which is uh, Amanda's yeah. pick. So that should be fun. Yeah. And um, I'll find something with a very small cast to torment <laughs> you all with. Thank you guys again for listening. If you want to help support the show or if you want to vote on the poll for what we're going to watch next year on Patreon, yes. head over to patreon.com slash the file and do that. Uh, thank you guys again. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Clay. And we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.